the North Mountain. If we move west, it'll be weeks before we reach our next fresh water source. So take us north. Our cannons will cover the path through the hyena scum. Madness! All you're asking for is more bloodshed and the senseless slaughter of our clansmen. Let us consult our government instead. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, this is a dangerous journey because these little bastards here, the hyenas on the road, and uh, they may be small, but they are small but sad, I guess you would say. These gnomes right here, they are basically small people in a colossal world. The world itself is much too dangerous for the gnomes to exist on the ground. They wouldn't last very long. They live in clans, and they're very they're very isolated within their clans. They don't necessarily care about other gnomish clans. They're more about the survival of their own families to get to what they consider breeding grounds for the tortoise, promised land for the gnomes. This is an area where they can live on the ground level and be free and be happy, but they have to get there first. And one of the biggest things stopping them are these guys right here, the hyenas. Now obviously, it'd be kind of interesting that these hyenas can take down something like this tortoise, but if you look in uh, prehistory and how hyenas would take down a mammoth, it's not that you just directly attack a mammoth and you hope to win. You would bang on some drums, you pack away and annoy it until you eventually push it into a trap, a pitfall of some sort, something like that. And it's kind of a sad scene. And I have my love of tortoises, I hate to see you die. There has to be a way to bring it down. So that's why this relationship, this symbiotic relationship, happens between the tortoises and the gnomes. They see a bond between them that can function where the tortoise says, hey, I will keep you guys away from the danger, but you have to be smart enough to guide me to the journey, and if I make it, you make it, we're all happy. So, getting down to sort of the battle, battle system, I'll say now that BFT is a third-person action game, I'll expand upon that later. But here you can have sort of a, an example of a top-down uh, what a battlefield would look like. Your two main foes would be other tortoise clans, because once again, the gnomes are very selfish. All they care about is themselves. They can attack another tortoise clan to take their, their, their uh, supplies to move on. And the tortoises, well, they're all male tortoises. The tortoises, the female tortoises are in the breeding grounds, and there's not that many of them. So they see this as not only a contest between the males, but as a way to thin their numbers so that they have a better chance of some action. <laughs> well, so let's look at this battle. You have this wide open grass where you don't move around. And too bad you have this little mountain chain right here, which acts kind of a natural barrier. So if, this, if they want to get closer to another, this tortoise would have to come around the mountain chain. The issue with that, though, is coming down here, you would be exposing your weak points, your backside, for, to this tortoise plant that would probably take advantage of that in a heartbeat. So what you have here is a, a transit of Fire back and forth, boom, boom, boom. I'm not, I'm not recording the sound effect. <laughs> you have this constant battle between these two tortoises, but unfortunately for this tortoise clan, they have this threat right here. These are the hyenas, and as you can see on the map, there is this little red X that's little forest where they disguise a pitfall, a trap that they'll be constantly <coughs> push the tortoise into. And to try to <coughs> explain this to y'all, think of it more like a game of tug and war tug of war. You are going to be trying to influence the tortoise to move away from the trap, at the same time the hyenas are going to be pushing you away or <coughs> towards it, and I'll explain how you, how you will affect that in the gameplay. The issue with this also is that while the hyenas are pushing you towards this trap, you will also be getting your weak side exposed to the other tortoise. Point. So you kind of have, in a battle, depending on what the situation is, you're fighting another tortoise, you're fighting hyenas, you're fighting tortoises and hyenas, you kind of have to be able to manage battles between two very different kinds of opponents. <coughs> so let's get down to the meat and potatoes of how you actually play it. You are the gnome mander, or I could say the gnome commander. <laughs> and as you can see, you have this pretty little auto crossbow right here. And this is really the key aspect of the game. This is how you control movement, this is how you control cannon fire, and this is how you control shooting other gnomes or hyenas that possibly board the ship. Shot the much, the torts. <laughs> This area here is your playground. This is the realm you can move around in. And it's just something in naval terms, you kind of have your starboard, your port gun, forward and out. Here's your little character guy right here. All of meanwhile, you have an entire working ship. People are moving around, <coughs> cannons are being fired, but they're not exactly that smart. That's why you're the commander. You have that presence of you lead these people. So with this crossbow, you would have what's considered a tracer fire which is when you fire a shot, you have a, trip, a long trail of smoke. And the color of the smoke is the, uh, the round of ammunition you want your cannonman to fire. So your position on the ship, say you move towards the port guns, and then 
there's a type, there's a hyena clan on uh, port side. So you want to, you're going to, your character is going to move to the port side, and the distance he is from the cannons themselves is going to determine whether you're firing a single cannon or whether you're firing a broadside. There's all the guns available on that side. So you're going to see these hyena scum, and you're probably going to load up a grape shot or an explosive round of ammunition to fire at the hyenas. So that would be like a green or a blue uh, tracer fire. You load that up in your crossfire, you fire it, your cannon see where, the, where you're firing at, and they'll fire it in succession right behind you. The, like I said, the distance you are towards the cannons could determine if you want to fire broadside, if you are trying to do heavy amounts of damage, or if you want to get right behind a cannon and do specific sniper fire, like the, there's a specific target that's giving you issues and you can eliminate that threat. Just like in naval combat, if two forces are one next to each other, then you would have what's happening as a board in the naval terms. And basically all the gnomes from one ship will be jumping over to the other ship. And, actually, I'm sorry, movement is an important aspect of the game. Uh, this is not a naval ship. You can't turn the rudder right, you can't turn the rudder left, and expect the rudder to go wherever you steer the wheel. What you have are these little pheromone bombs, which are special scented uh, ammunition that the tourists will be able to pick up the smell of and follow that scent trail. Kind of like the little plastic bait in the trail. You put a piece of bait in front of it, it's going to go towards that. So you're going to fire the bees in the direction you want the tourists to move. But the issue is the hyenas are also pushing you in another direction. So that's when you have that aspect of tugging more. So in a battle, you have to decide, do I eliminate, eliminate the hyenas that are influencing me to go in the wrong direction? Do I fire more pheromone shots that hopefully get a stronger influence to go in a particular direction? Or should I just focus on the tortoise plan opposite of me, because that's probably going to be my biggest threat in the end. So to initiate a boarding, either you fire a pheromone shot at another tortoise, or they fire back at you. And that's basically going to tell the tortoise to, hey, go up right next side, alongside another tortoise. So that's how a siege would be affected. Obviously, if you're a defender, you would get some form of defensive bonus. So it isn't simply a number game of, oh, their 200 gnomes are going to wipe out my 150 gnomes. No, we're going to be buckled down, ready to defend ourselves. And hopefully, as, hopefully with a smart commander, you'll be able to get out of the siege successfully. This is why I decided to keep this as a third-person shooter game, is because you're using this crossbow to shoot out tracer fire with direct cannon fire, but just like in any shooter, you can load up cross actual crossbow rounds and fight alongside your gnome companions and get into combat with other gnomes. In the same sense, a hyena, these are, some, these are some real big bastards, they'll load themselves into a catapult and sling them, slingshot themselves on top of the forts. Now, as you can imagine, this large hyena with probably dual, dual axes, giving some sort of a howl and you shit your pants. <laughs> you don't just run up to, with your bayonetta, you don't just run up to a hyena and just take it down with your bayonetta. It's going to cause a lot of havoc, and you're going to need a lot of your gnomes to focus on that hyena to get it off the ship. Meanwhile, that number you can see is going to start dropping. Your gnomes are going to start being the people. So, you want to quickly eliminate the hyena threat before you worry about whatever air, what other threats are out there. People want to see some form of customization involved, but I feel like you have your two basic cannon types, you have direct fire and indirect fire, each one posing some sort of an advantage, whether you care more about um, timing to take to hit the target, where accuracy, or you care more about long range fire, or barrages. Um, these here are some examples of basic ammunition types. I've already explained movement. Here you have three simple offensive ones. Grape shot is for taking out the gnomes aboard a tortoise ship, or possibly scattered numbers of hyenas, just like a cannon shotgun. Um, you have your standard round, you know, if you're familiar with any form of naval combat. And then here you have something with a little more of an explosion. The same way that you can choose which uh, cannons and ammunition to use, you can also place your cannons on different hard points on the forest. And this is proves, proves a strategic element of, am I going to focus guns heavy on one side of the tortoise, or am I going to go on the other side of the tortoise, do I want to even spread around me? You have to manage where your blind spots are going to be. Are you going to be all frontal, all left, all right? Sorry, port starboard. <laughs> so then you have the journey. And I don't want to, I don't want people to think about, I don't want people to think about this as a separate game. This is not a separate game. This is the rhyme and the reason 
to why these battles are happening. Why are you getting into these fights? The depth of this is really only determined by the time allotted or how much time we've been developing this. As you can see, this is the ultimate prize for the tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> for the gnomes, there's a little bit of a city area that they can run around in and frolic, but away from that, because they don't want to be around. <laughs> I want to be able to jump onto a giant eagle, fly around, and drop bombs on my enemy. 